Hello, everyone. Welcome to my PCHR Gen4 research competition talk. Today, I'm going to present the high damage level radiation responses of additive manufactured HD9 alloys for Gen4 fast reactor applications. My name is Peng Yuan Xiu. I'm a fifth year PhD student at the University of Michigan. Just a quick slide about the motivation and the introduction of this work. So, the material requirements for the Gen4 uh, reactors, including fast reactors, are acceptable radiation resistance at high damage level neutron environments uh, and the high temperature uh, strength and creep resistance. And the route HT9, which is a ferritic modern silic steel, has been developed for decades for the fast reactor applications due to its excellent swallowing resistance and uh, great high temperature strength. We are also trying to leverage the additive manufacturing technique to fabricate HT9 alloys due to its flexible geometrical and compositional control for fabricating these structural components. The hope is to get a better materials performance under radiation and a reduced cost. So this work is really about the evaluation of radiation responses of AMHT9 alloys. And this is the workflow of this study. We have the direct energy deposition uh, to fabricate the HT9 alloys. And then we have this S-build or ASB condition. But, but, due, but because of the formation of the delta ferrite phase, which leads to the uh, hardening and embrittlement of the material, we have the post-build heat treatment to try to reduce and eliminate them uh, in two routes. One is called ACO3, the other one is called FCRD. As you can see, they have slightly different normalization and tempering temperatures. And once we obtain these three conditions of amht 9s we need to evaluate its radiation responses. We do so by performing the uh, dual beam radiations by using the self-ion radiation to create 150 dPa damage level, as well as the helium injection to get 4 helium ADPM per dPa to account for that uh, transmutation product in the materials in the new uh, reactor environments. Uh, the radiation was done at 445 degrees C to mimic the uh, fast reactor condition. After that, we did the scanning transmission electron microscopy or STEM to look at the, uh, the microstructures in the irradiated amht 9s and as you can see here, we have the first sets of results as the dislocation loops. Uh, as built, in the s build condition, we saw a high density, uh, is, we saw it's it highly defective and the high density of sink strength. However, in ACO3 and FCRD, the two heat treated uh, amht 9s we saw a much reduced sink density as compared to the s build And we saw a, a well defined dislocation loop structure in ACO3 and FCRD. And how is that gonna affect the uh, cavity evolution? Well, look at this bottom row of the images showing you the cavity images for the S-build, uh, ACO3 and FCRD. We saw in the S-build uh, very small size of cavities uh, in this alloy. However, in the ACO3 and FCRD, we saw the much coarsened uh, cavities in these two heat treated HD9s. And that uh, indicates a, a much higher swelling, volumetric swelling in the heat treated uh, HD9s as compared to S-build. So as a conclusion, the high sink strength uh, in the s build sample or from the uh, AM, uh, AM process really retards the defect evolution. Uh, and as a result, the s build AMHT9 has excellent, uh, have excellent swelling resistance at high damage level and high temperature. And therefore it is the AM technique is really promising for the Gen4 fast reactor applications. And with that, I would like to thank for your attention and if you have more questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.